Oh hi, it's Bukai. So we're back with another build video for Eidolon, and today I'm going to be showing you guys my catcher. So for the catcher build, it's pretty simple on there. We're starting with alchemy. You want to start off with taking your bug two a bubble on there instead of your green cauldron, which at level 15, mine's increasing by 46% and 300% instead of 100% for my multi bug chance. A pretty good a uh, upgrade if I do say so myself, but I don't really have it that high of a level. From there, the other pieces that you want to be upgrading is your Sanic tools. Now, the following tools provide you with 12.7% at level 17, more skilling power than normal. This will massively increase your gains on there. Now, the other ones that you want to be investing in, if I could find it... Yeah, is your Archer or Bust on there. I don't know why I was why I was struggling on there. And I don't have this very high leveled up at all. Uh, I should be investing more water into it. I just haven't been. So yeah, level up this a lot more considering 1.31 times more your bonuses per your archer based characters. Now, since a catcher is an archer, it's a very useful skill. After that, your sweet step in to increase your agility to gain more catch rate. And obviously, if you want more drop rates, going down to your dropping loads. And that's the basics that you want to be upgrading into your alchemy for a archer now looking at the post office if you want to have a really good a, a catching build on there and a dedicated catcher upgrade your bob's boxes for your bug hunting supplies up to level 200 and your food with your remainder on there once you get this up to 200 then cap that to four cap this to four as well and that's what i do to build a catcher and i'll say it again i'll say it to the grave Increasing your food game for a catcher is really important for your skilling. Now, going down to the obols, I don't really have the best of obols on there. And I'm going to equip that guy, take that guy off, equip that guy, get rid of this strength one, get rid of this guy as well, and replace those with my fishing nets. So... You want to keep inside of here your, did I say fishing nets? I meant my bug catching nets on there. So you want to have your silver obols on there above your actual silver obols of agility. The reason why is because you get two catching power and one agility. Now, you don't want to be having your bronze obol of few flies over your silver agility opal. I find that you gain more power and you gain more additional efficiency over the actual catching power on there. And that there is the Olbles. And now we're going to be looking at our good old-fashioned cards. So we're going to be equipping our Butterflies, and then our Sentient Cereals, and my good old-fashioned Fruit Flies. And from there, once you've got those basics down, I take Amarok on there. And to go into my further on there... What I like to do is, and I know people don't like this, but I equip my crab cake because considering I greatly enjoy the reduced food gain or the food consumption and the speed increase from the good old fashioned butterfly food. Now, from there, you want to be equipping anything that gives you your good old agility on there. So things like your carrot men, not that guy, your mafioso. And then for my last one, I like to take card drop. So I have a 16% card drop here, and my frogs is only at 15. So I will equip my Sneeble on there in order to get more cards. I completely forgot to add something in that's very important, uh, which is why this video is uploaded, and that is on the card sets. It's really important to add in your easy resources card set on there. It gives you like 7% efficiency rating. So yeah, here's for the re-upload. The weird thing that I'm going to be doing here that isn't as recommended, what you want to do is go on one of your damage dealing characters and smash all of your skills against the hive. Because considering when I attack this on here, you're going to see that there's a bonus of 5%. The higher damage that you do in this little time period, the more percentage gains that you will get for your actual fruit flies. So I'm going to go over here and we're going to look at our AFK gains and just without any skills invested, we're at 25 gains on there an hour, which is not too bad considering we only really have the Bandito Boots equipped on there. Now, starting off, we're going to be starting over here in the Bowman tab, and you've got 
three skills that you need to be equipping with sunset on the hives for your away gains. Now, I don't have enough points to invest all of these guys straight up to 100, so we need to really think about our builds. And the power of 10 oak logs, and this is why when people had asked me before, why do you have your shaman uh, sitting down and grinding up your oak logs to a million? This is why. If you've got over 100,000 oak logs on there, I would say bring that right to 100 on there. So let's boost that straight to 25. And boost that to 10. And there we go. From there, looking at your Briar Patch on there, Agility has a larger effect on catching than efficiency than normal. And you also have your Bug Enthusiast uh, percentage catching experience. This, I ignore. This guy here... And this guy here are the two that you kind of want to be upgrading. So what I like to do is I look at the amount of points I have left. And one thing that I can do is go 50-50 into these two here while ignoring the bug enthusiast. However, I'm going to instead go 25. Ah, you know what? I will go 50-50 on there. Yep, 50-50. And then I will put the remainder into the agility for the briar patch runner. Now, if you still have points left over, which my guy doesn't, and once you get these two to 100, you can then boost up your a, um, your Swifty statues, depending on the amount of catching statues that you have. My character doesn't have too many, but if you have a lot, don't hesitate to boost this guy straight up to 100 on there. And same thing with your ovals. Your ovals at max one point on there. I'm not a big fan of putting more in. And if you still have points left over, considering you have a ton of points on there, then invest in your max talents for your quickness boots. I clearly don't, as this character is going to be fairly starved on there. Now, going into the Bowman tab on there. There's not really much that you can actually invest in on your Bowman that will increase your actual gains. So, what you want to be looking at is your Garb of Unaging Quality and your Sanic Speed. These are your two bread and butters. Yeah, these are your two bread and butters, your Garb of Unaging Quality, and your Sanic Speed. So bring both of these up to 100, but I start with the Sanic Speed. So let me just boost that up to 25, 79, boost that to 10, bring that up to 99, and boost up to 1. Now, so I don't have to do that again, boost this up to 25, and bring that up to level 100. Now, if you still have points left over, there's a couple things that you can do on there. Some people will invest into the anvil points to get more anvil points, but you're better off to do that and then and then reset to get a positive of 100 on there. Uh, the other option is to invest into the focus soul. That's the option that I'm going to be taking because considering there's not really, in my opinion, much else to invest in. And focus soul is just a dump stat at that point. Once you get that to 100, uh, there's... Not really much else that you can put in on there, aside from going into the, yeah, I already know, for additional experience per agility whenever you level up any specialized skill. Uh, that's where you would dump once you get this guy up to 100. Other than that, placing into your, a, uh, your anvil to get more points, and your godly creation if you're using this guy as a smithy. But other than that, that's pretty much what you invest in on the Bowman tab. Now, looking at the actual basic beginner tab on there for the archer, you want to be looking at your, oops, good old-fashioned elusive efficiency. Bring that up to 100 on there. Followed by bringing, I like to take my broken time up to 75, which increases my production speed in all town skills. This guy's pretty decent on there to get a 50% as this will increase your alchemy. This will increase your a, a smithy and I'm assuming for world three, we'll continue investing in on there, but don't invest that 75 until you've already plugged in on your quickness boots. Only invest into the broken time. If you've already invested your quickness boots up to the maximum that you possibly can, including the increases from your AG again, which I unfortunately don't have enough points to bring these two to 100, and therefore I will just end up 
keeping this guy at the 100 and investing my final 25 into my good old fashioned broken time. From here, there's not really much that you can actually put in. Uh, there's pretty much just going right and dumping the rest of your stuff into luck as your dump stat. And that's really it for the actual catching build. Obviously, you want to be using the highest tool that you have available. I don't have a platinum tool despite uh, being, well, I'm also two levels away from using the platinum tool, but I also need to start mining some platinum. So that's the other reason why I haven't gotten it yet. Now, if I go to my AFK info, as you can see, we now have a 214 per hour on our fruit flies. And this is how you catch a lot of fruit flies on there and the increased number will go down further as you go along, and the better the actual catching rod that you get. So I hope that this build's been useful for everyone, and if you guys liked it, don't hesitate to give it a like, subscribe, but if there's anything that you can think of that I can do to improve these builds, just let me know in the comments below. I'm always looking to update these builds to be the most efficient possible for players, and yeah, so if you guys enjoyed that, let me know. Take care.